All right, guys, we're back again with another video. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about the full range driver again. This is part two of the two part series. Now in the first part, we took care of that base section so that we know that the full range driver isn't gonna be lacking any base. In this section, we're gonna show you what to do in order to take care of any peaks. And we're gonna be taking care of that by use of a notch filter. All right, that's enough talking. Let's get diving into the computer. All right guys, so we have XM open and we have the basic layout. So let's just remind you of the layout. This is where we're gonna be making all of our crossover. This is the frequency response of the crossover currently with the particular speaker that we have loaded. And we have loaded the RS100-8, which is the eight ohm version of the same four inch full range driver that we were using last time. We also have the impedance chart here which shows the impedance of the speaker, or in this case, the full impedance of the system since it's a full range driver. Now, what we want to do is look for peaks that we think might become problematic in the frequency response. And as we look at the frequency response, the peak that we notice that's gonna be most problematic is of course this one right here at 17K. So what do we do? We add a notch filter. A notch filter is very, very simple, and it consists of three components. Those components are a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor. Now those three components will either be in parallel or in series. So let's go ahead and show you what a parallel circuit looks like and a series circuit looks like on this particular speaker, both taking care of the same problem area and why you might use one over the other. All right guys, so let's go ahead and show you the parallel circuit. You have the resistor, you have the inductor, and you have the capacitor. Let's talk a little bit about the roles so that you know what each one does. The capacitor and the inductor are what chooses the frequency range. So think of them like a high pass and a low pass. And the resistor is gonna go ahead and determine how much you attenuate that peak. So let's go ahead and load this and all right, so our graph, it looks like right now with the particular values we have, we are attenuating this section, which obviously is not what we want to do. So we're going to tune the inductor down. The lower the value, the higher the frequency. So we're going to go uh, somewhere around here-ish, I think. And let's go ahead and check out the inductor that also is going to be down and let's go ahead and attenuate the resistor now right now it's starting to look better but the resistor if you notice the lower the less it attenuates the higher the more it attenuates now we are starting to see the progress that we want but it's just not strong enough so let's go ahead and tune this up all right there you go right about there looks good you could obviously go a little bit more but somewhere between 40 and 50 on the resistor works really well. So now we have a fairly flat response. Now there's other things that we could do to really flatten this out, but overall, this is looking much better than it was before. That's gonna be a parallel circuit. So why would you wanna use a parallel circuit? Well, if you notice, the impedance graph looks exactly the same as it did before we put any type of notch filter on. So it's really good to use when impedance might become an issue. Now let's go ahead and show you the series circuit and also show you what it does to impedance. All right, so let's go ahead and start changing our values of our components. And you might be thinking, wow, he's doing this really fast. Well, yeah, I, I might have cheated and done this ahead of time. All right, let's tune this way down this time. So this is interesting because now when we're on a series circuit, the lower the value, the more it attenuates. Now, I mean, look at that already. I mean, that's just looking great. Right there at 3.6, 3.3, you know, I think they sell a 3.5 and you're done. And that is a very flat response. But check what it did to the impedance graph. When you look at the impedance graph, now you have this impedance dip here. 
which in this particular range is probably not going to be a problem at all. However, if that was in the woofer range and that was well below your nominal impedance, that could be a very big problem. So you gotta be careful when you use a series notch filter. All right guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you understand now what each one of these components does so that you can start adding these notch filters into your actual project. Now, if you have any questions, don't forget to leave them in the comment section below to like the video, share it with your friends. And if you guys are looking for some DIY kits, check out my new website. I have down in the description below as I'm selling kits now. Now, if there's any custom speaker work that you need done, just check it out, leave me a message, and I will get back to you about what I can do for you as far as a flat pack or speaker design goes. All right, thanks guys. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you later.